All right, guys, so we're heading off right now. It's a little rainy, not bad. Uh, I'm gonna say rain, it's more of like a light mist. So um, every morning, like when I like to go out, I normally stop and get food. Uh, I have a choice of Carl's Jr., McDonald's, Taco Bell, and uh, Jack in the Box. And so right now I decided to go to, what is this, Taco Bell, because I'm in the mood for steak and crunch wrap. It's fucking delicious. So, hopefully this is all going to go out good, because last time I ate here, the food was delicious, and I want it to be delicious again. The only problem with their drive through is it's not very big and has sharp turns. So, let's fucking do this. Ha, huh. nine foot clearance, don't ring your bell on this. That's a good thing. It's pretty funny. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. How about you? Uh, pretty good. Good time. Order whenever ready. All right. Hmm. Can I get a steak AM crunch wrap? Okay. And then two uh, with uh, two hash browns, please. Does that mean two hash browns on the or? Yes, please. That would take break. Yes. And any poultry today? Uh, the, uh, no thank you. So we're going to drop some fresh ones. It's going to be like a three minute wait. Is that okay? That's fine. Alright, so for the three items, it would be 530 cents winner for you. Alright, thank you. Thank so you for the support. Did you guys see that? They're so nice that they're going to get me some new ones or like some fresh ones so guys stay tuned all right guys so the people here at taco bell are so nice sarcasm in my voice of course i'm all energetic i just had my uh, little bit of cup of coffee uh that they're gonna make me wait an extra three minutes because they want to make my hash browns fresh whoa i, I don't really care i'm not in a hurry it's a vlog i don't know it's like my clock's 10 minutes fast, so it's 8.42. I'm only gonna fish for a little bit. Hopefully the rain will dry up, and I'll go do some other activities that I like to do. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just wanna fish for a little bit. So, of course, stay tuned. I don't know. Just gotta see, look at this Taco Bell. Whoosh. Taco Bell. And you guys gonna say, why is there a seat cover right there like that? That's for my dog. We just got back from the vet. She has uh, diabetes, and so I'm gonna start taking her with me more often. Like. Yesterday we just got her back and I took her with me to get food. Dinner for last night, which was a Taco Bell. <laughs> then we went into Petco and I got some, like, the, the three new fish and some uh, blood worms and stuff like that for the food. For their food, and she loved it. So I'm going to take her with me more so I can bond with her a little more because she doesn't have much long to live. I've had her since I was eight years old. She's like the homie. She's like my best friend. And uh, we take her sometimes out on the boat. Or sometimes out on the boat and uh, she loves it. The only bad thing is when we try to boat flip a fish, she's there to catch it. Like legit, you just boat flip it, she's like right there and catches it. And we've tried to have her hold it in the mouth. She doesn't hurt the fish, she's holding her mouth. And sometimes if she just sits there with it and she holds it perfectly and steadily, you can just unhook the fish and then she'll run off with it on the boat and then we try to take it back from her. But sometimes she just hops in the water with the fish and says, you know, this is my fish. My fish. And then, we end up getting, then she just drops it eventually and she hops back on the boat. So guys, stay tuned because after this, I'm heading to the golf course to do some fishing. Shaka bra. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to catch anything. It's January. You know the usual. And so this is the new song by Steven Tyler, Red, White, and You. The lead singer from Aerosmith currently singing country music now. Leave a comment if you guys agree or disagree with this. I don't know. I mean, his first song was total shite, and this one's a little better. So, guys, stay tuned for this exciting vlog. All right, guys, I just got my food. Everything looks to be in order. Let's check to see if these fresh hash brown hash hash browns are worth it. They're pretty good. They're nice and hot, like really hot, and they're nice and crunchy. But I'm gonna eat off camera because I eat like a like a pig. So guys, heading to the golf course right now. Hopefully we some slay some fish. If I catch one, I'll be happy. 
I catch two, I'll be like ecstatic and like just fucking orgy or orgasm, just fucking ah. Oh. All right, so guys, stay tuned. All right, guys, let's, let's turn off this Elton John for a little bit. Tiny Dancer, favorite song by Elton John, kind of, sort of. All right, so since I have some free time right now, since I'm driving and we're almost there, uh, it gives me a chance to talk about some of the stuff that people have left, like comments and stuff, and um, DM'd me or left comments on my uh, Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, you know, the usual. Uh, I don't really go on Facebook, so uh, I don't really check it, but there were some couples out there, or there's a couple people, a handful of people out there that were um, talking about, like, New Year's resolution and, like, uh, biggest bass so far of 2016 or biggest bass of the three species of bass that we have here uh, overall in my fishing career. So let's start off with my biggest, which was a bass, which was 1023. Bought a Dom Pedro on the Huddleston swim bait, the 6.8. Uh, during a tournament, our total weight was like 26 something. So it was pretty good. Uh, my biggest spot was like 5, 4, or 519. Caught on, caught, caught at Orville, also on the Huddleston. And my biggest smallmouth, which is I want to say. Uh, I want to say it was like four pounds, like almost four pounds, and that was caught on Tolik. <laughs> Not on the Huddleston, but on a swim bait that I, I don't like to give out because it works really good. It's been working so far. I haven't really thrown it this year, but I, I like in my last video that's up right now at Don Pedro, um, I lost a five to six pounder on that swim bait, and I was just really depressed because that was my only fish of the day. But I lost it, so you know stuff happens. And um, what was it? So my biggest muley, which would be a largemouth mixed with a smallmouth, was also three pounds caught on a drop shot. <coughs> Ugh, Taco Bell. And then uh, my biggest muley, which was a largemouth and spotted bass, was four pounds caught on. I want to say a crankbait. Um, my biggest smallmouth spot mix muley, which deer was caught at, I need to get over, was caught at uh, Tolik on a little tiny crappie jig. That's what normally we go to Tolik there, we, catch, we go to catch 60 fish, but they're all, you know, smallmouths and bluegill perch and stuff. I'll do a video this upcoming spring or summer when I go out there. Um, and then, oh well, I'll just go, I'll go all my species since we're, we have some time, it's a vlog. Uh, biggest crappie was like it's like two and a quarter caught at this golf course. Uh, biggest bluegill was probably in that pound to two, uh, pound and a half range. Uh, I want to say that was caught at Tolik. Biggest perch in that pound pound and a half range, pound and a quarter actually, pound and a half page. Uh, I'm not gonna make that corner. Okay, I did. Uh, that was also caught Tolik. Most of the most of my big panfish and stuff are caught at either Tolik because that's just a place where I know there's some big ones. Um, I've yet to catch a carp, but my biggest squall fish was four pounds out of the stance loss. And as soon as my uh, GoPro died when I was fishing with my buddy Tim, go ahead and watch those videos, part one and part two, or just the, all of them. I have two friends named Tim, and they all went fishing with me, so it's kind of confusing. Um, there's my turn off right here. Yeah. Um, so that's basically it. Well, my biggest Sacramento sucker, which is kind of a carp, was I want to say around five pounds, caught on four pound test. Night crawler on a crappie max bait casting reel, which was total shite that I just found. Put on a uh, ultra ultra light, just for the fact that I want to have fun. And we were in uh, Oakdale fishing the stance loss just for a little bit, so we were, it cost you less. I tied to go over there, and it just got done raining, so there's a lot of um, night crawlers and earthworms or whatever you want to call them out about in the water. And I saw him, so I flip over to him, and he sucked it in instantly. And it was a pretty good fight. Took me probably around. I want to say literally like seven to ten minutes just because of the fact that uh, the brake system on this thing was total shite. It was horrible. It's pretty funny though. Um, I want to say it's everything. Biggest catfish in that 12 to 15 pound range. Uh, didn't get the exact measurement, so I'm going with it with that. It's kind of a brief. I want to say it's more towards 13 to 14, but I'm giving it in that range. I was also caught on a crankbait eight pound test, St. Croix Legend Extreme, uh, cranking rod seven foot medium during a tournament pissed me off pretty funny though honestly I want to say it's everything that I like most of my species that I catch 
normally and uh, hopefully today I'm not asking for a big fish I'm just ho hoping to catch some fish whether they be pan fish or bass you know just to get some fish because uh, my last Don Pedro trip was not very good it, it absolutely horrible the worst I've ever done a Don Pedro in a tournament we got like almost less than seven pounds literally almost seven pounds for five fish and it absolutely fucking sorry excuse my language just destroyed my like my like my ego like what I want to do so let's take a look at the golf course right now so you guys see that water is not as low as I thought it was going to be so as you guys can see water's come up since last time me and Tim fished here so I'm gonna start on this pond right here and uh hopefully catch some fish so guys stay tuned oh and I forgot my other battery shoot already on two all right guys so we're out here golf course uh, a little rainy and do you guys need some shoes because they're right there and I just got it all right guys so I'm on my first fish right now I was felting some small strikes on the crankbait and it turns out to be little bass on this new crankbait I bought just for the sole purpose to fish this golf course with hook came right out right there turn it's the mini crankbait or whatever from Bass Pro a nice little bass average size for this pond uh, colors good looks like he has some little doubles right there maybe check the other side looks like he oh guys look at that that fish looked like he almost got eaten that is definitely uh, bass marks because that's basically the only the biggest thing that's in here are some bass maybe a catfish but definitely he was attacked by something and if there's a bass that's big enough to eat that like I said my biggest bass was like um, was three and a half four pounds my scales a little off but um, it was caught on a frog and if a fish able if a bass is able to eat a frog that's three and a half four pounds he could definitely eat a bass like that so I was just reeling it in nice and I was feeling some small ticks like that right there my line jumped and I said hook sets are free so I set the hook and they're just barely nabbing at it they're just barely ticking at it so it was nice to finally get a fish on this nice well I would say not very nice day guys but there's another little short strike I don't know what color this is I'm just gonna call it brown and white or something like that I believe that's what it's called is brown and white I do have my two rod tag and as you see I have that finesse or the z-man fitness or finesse TDS something in the shark tree or uh, watermelon red shark tree is kind of bottom to it Let's see if I get a kind of a, uh, just some other bite besides on a reaction bite but a reaction bites always the best bite for me I've been able to throw crankbaits there's no little tick um, I've been always able to throw crankbaits and get a couple bites just all around all year long lately so I hope I could continue with some more good bites at least I got the skunk off let me take my buff off it's a little cold it's a little rainy oh I just had a nice follower guys don't know if it was a gill or a bass couldn't quite see the water's semi dirty let's just check the GoPro and I'll hopefully get back to you guys with some more fish fishing guys I'm so excited to get that fish I'm just so excited all right guys so I just missed another one right now and that felt like a more sharper bite so I was thinking more that was a bluegill uh, grabbing it and I went set the hook and I felt it pop off so it just felt like the fish rolled on it kind of so um, it seems to be at this angle cast bringing it into the kind of I wouldn't say it's a channel but it's kind of a trough me trying to put put uh, lake logic into this uh, it's just a trough fish seems to be holding up in the trough so doing the diet Oh, you guys saw that. He just popped it. Same place. Uh, there might be some fish holding up right there. Dang it. That's two casts. There might be a little school of bass or mix in with there with some bluegill. Maybe I catch a crappie. If I catch a crappie, I'm going to damn near piss my pants with excitement. And uh, I didn't put my waterproof case on so you guys can hear me talk. And um, hopefully I can get a fish to stick. These are very small trouble hooks on here. And, um, you know, I'm not really complaining. I caught one fish, so... Hopefully I get a couple more. I mean, rain's still going pretty strong. And uh, no fish on that bite. But this crankbait Bass Pro Shop series, absolutely perfect right now for, to mimic. I wouldn't say mimic, but get what these fish are normally used to. They're used to seeing small, small bait fish and uh, frogs and, you know, night crawlers and stuff because we're at a pond. And, and they definitely love golf balls. Just kidding. Um sarcasm and uh maybe give this spot a couple more then move down a little bit and uh stupid me forgot to bring an extra battery 
so that kind of goes with I have limited right now I'm probably on one one uh, bar I guess you'd call it but uh, I'll finish out this cast and hopefully catch a fish and what I like about this what I like about this uh, crankbait is, is the size of it. it's perfect and the bill the bills there's one guys right there this looks like a, oh oh no oh I knew it when it when it did when it did that run I knew it was a bluegill when it did that run not a bad one either guys look at that look at that right there Oof. okay stop 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 all right guys i was about to call it i was about to call it as soon as that fish hit it that it was going to be a gill or a perch this is a perch sunfish need the extreme philly fishing guy here to tell me exactly how to say that but look at that that's a nice that's a nice january winter perch right there caught on the crankbait I kind of felt like all the short strikes were definitely going to be perch, but look at that. Look at that. That's a nice one right there. That's around the average size. They do get a little smaller. They do get a little bigger, but let's get that release. And uh, there you go. Normally, if you come over something like that, you normally get bit. But that's just my personal experience, and I didn't get bit on that, so it kind of ticked me off a little bit. So maybe I won't get bit. Oh, like I look at that guy, bluegill. I watched him, watched him hit it. All right, so like I was saying, maybe I won't get bit, but changing the spectrum. This guy too is also a little banged up right there. That might not be from a fish, but it might be from uh, just being around in this area. No, there's no rock, so I'm thinking maybe he did get attacked. Maybe tried to get eaten. So I'm right in the nostril. Good hook penetration. Nice little guy. Uh, perch thing. Good sized mouth too. Crushers. Teeth. Overall a nice fish. That's probably what was following me the first time. Took a couple casts to get him in to uh, really eat it, to commit to it. So uh, that's one fish. Maybe I'll make another cast. But I'll keep you guys supposed to cast back over there. There we go. That's the cast. That's the money cast right there. That's the money cast, guys. Pair a little right along here. Maybe get a bite. Nope. Oh, just missed. He just nicked it. He's hitting it again. Gosh darn it. It ticks me off. I make a good cast and there's there's barely tapping it. Bear oh no. God dang, get out of there. Okay, good. There's barely tapping it and it's really it's kind of ticking me off. There's one. Bluegill perch thing. Oh no, get out of there. That's right, get back up. Funny fighting because they, they, these guys tend to run back and forth. And I don't want to get them hooked up. And this is the smallest one of the day. Look at the ones. Alright, let's just push that down. Let's push your things down. Um, what I like to do with, um, you know, when getting the hooks out, I like to do the front one first. So if you do the back one first, then it gives them that, you know, that real mobility to swing around and get the other hook in you. And the last thing you need to do is get a hook in you. So it's a nice little guy. Little blue perch, bluegill perch thing. I don't know. I don't know much stuff. When it gets when it gets wintry like this, they tend to all look the same. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to really tell the difference between. Alright guys, so this might be the biggest fish of the day right now. Uh, I know it doesn't look very big, but um, that was caught finally on... Uh, finesse a uh, thing by z-man in the watermelon red um they're not yeah watermelon red um i had to switch it up instead of wacky rigging i just nose hooked it I gotta switch hands this hand's a little too cold and um i just nose hooked him and i put a little split shot on it because i remembered it they they float and, oh, okay maybe he's about the same size as the other one so not very big um let him go real quick and i'll show you guys what i was talking about now he's a little bigger so let's show you what I was doing. Like I said, I just nose hooked it like this. And just having this on there and it floats up like this and I pop it. And he ate it pretty quick after that cast. Or after like as soon as it hit the water kind of. Alright guys, so I just caught a fish right now and I'm about to piss my pants like I said I would. And a fish will piss pants right about now because you guys are never going to believe what I just caught. A mo fucking crappie. Are you kidding me guys? A freaking crappie. 
my god, I am literally pissing my pants right now. I can't believe I just caught a crappie. I just caught a crappie. Let's just let's just send that text to my dad. Here we go, here we go, surreying it up. Just caught a crappie on a crankbait, pissing my pants right now. Look at that, guys. That's no giant crappie, but man, I love catching crappie. <laughs> Absolutely love it. This is the best vlog I've ever had of crying right now. Not really, but towards the end of the day, dude, I can't believe I just caught a crappie. I'm going to take one more picture because I never catch crappie. Absolutely never. And it's a privilege to catch one. One more picture. Boom. Boom. Get in the backhand. And we're going to let this beautiful species go. Alright guys, on the phone with my friend Tim. Tim, say hi. Fab. Follow him, Delta Bassin 209 on on YouTube. And it's caught this nice little bass right there on the finesse Z-Man, what you call it. Toss him back. Stay tuned for more fish. Alright guys, I'm just throwing this finesse thing again and I'm just letting it hit the bottom, popping it a couple times. And uh Line, no, my line's moving. Okay. Yeah, I got a fish. Do what? There's one. Little guy, about the same size as the last one. Uh, fish seem to be bigger on <clears throat> this side of the pond, which makes sense because this is where I normally catch some of the bigger ones. Or see a lot more of the bigger ones is over in this proximity of the pond. And uh, nice little little guy again. Uh, like I was just show you again, what a rig I'm using is I'm gonna call this the amazing fray experience or just the split shot rig. It's just basically split shot, and, uh, letting it hit the bottom, the usual, you know, letting it hit the bottom, just pulling it back, little dragging it, feeling a couple. Uh, if I feel any rock or anything, I let it sit because there tends to be rock right here and rock on that side. And they tend to be more on this side of the pond. So stay tuned guys. More bass here. I did get a crappie bite here, so that's what I was pretty happy about. That that's what makes the trip pretty good. Just did There's one guys right there. Is it crappie? Guys, I think it's another crappie. It is another crappie. Oh, it's a slab. That's a slab. Well, not really a slab, but that oh wow, that's a nice crappie. Another crappie, guys, just like I was talking about catching. And look at that, another crappie. That that makes the trip even better. That's crappie number two. I never get to catch crappies. This is an amazing moment right here. That's what makes me think that that other fish. All right, guys, we're on another fish. Looks to be another crappie. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's even bigger than the last one. Right there, look at that, guys even bigger than a lot well maybe oh it's a chunky guy dude that's a chunky one that's 110 percent chunk right there that is another nice crappie on the crankbait again let's get another picture because i hardly ever catch crappie get that look at the mouth on that guy it's another nice crappie how many people get to go catch crappie like this well, probably a lot more people, but that's crazy for me. Hopefully get back to you guys. 